who decided to call a press conference with all the media platforms so my voice can be out. First of all, it's concerning my registration process and the irregularities. So I'd like to share with you that here is a certificate for registration for a party, but it is a provisional certificate. On the 12th of September, 2023, we submitted all the forms and the requirements that is needed for a citizen of this country to form a party. So we can also become a part of our national government and contribute to the development of this country. As per the EC's own constitution, an application should receive a response not later than seven days upon the application. There was a banker's draft that was also released and cashed. But that seven days came after 12 September and this certificate never showed up. We wrote a letter to follow up. And then on and on, we still did not get the response. On the 30th of May, after six, seven months, we got a call saying that the application would be ready. And I think sometime in June, finally, the application, the certificate, which is provisional, was ready. Now, here's the problem. If you get this certificate, you have to go through a gazetting system. You will be vetted by the EC. And it will take three months. So after the three months, before they decide to give you the license. In this case, we were prepared with our movement company as well, just in case we were delayed. That's exactly what has happened. After eight months of putting this registration through, we received a provisional license after eight months, which makes it very difficult for us to risk another three months of getting the actual lines before we can proceed as a party completely makes it impossible for the new force. And therefore, I'm here to announce that the new force plans going forward is to run as an independent candidate for this year, 2024. We believe that if we have to wait for three months and we're guaranteed to still get this license, we wouldn't have two months to even campaign or market for this party. I want to assure Ghanaians for one thing, I will keep on proceeding for this party after this elections. At this very point, the new force, ourselves, the team, and all the people that have been a part of this believe that is a great idea for us to go ahead with the independent candidates. Now, in the past, I know that a lot of people haven't been successful being independent. But the one thing that freed Ghana from the imperialist is independence. That's how we started. So the one thing that I believe would relieve Ghana from our political principles, which is undermining the nation's development, and the country's development is independent. Today, I courageously stand here and say that I would be able to get it onto the ballot based on us serving or submitting the right requirements by EC, and we will make a big difference. We would make history in this very coming election. Thank you. And I'd like to I'd like to share the plans with you. In light of the obstacle we are facing with our party registration, I'm announcing my intention to run as independent candidate in the up and coming elections. The fight is personal to me. But my neck is out for you.
I have lived the struggles of everyday Ghanaians. I have felt the weight of poverty and the sting of limited opportunities. This is not just a campaign. It is a revolution for a prosperous Ghana. Running as an independent allows me to continue my mission of bringing economic freedom. I like to repeat this part. This gives me the opportunity to bring you the economic freedom. What does this entail? Three things, and I want to align that with you. Equity, equality, and empowerment to all Ghanaians without being hindered by bureaucratic roadblocks. Our movement is about unleashing the immense minerals and human wealth of our nation. We will no longer be held back by our data systems or entrenched interests. We are building a movement out of the moment, and that would fundamentally transform Ghana, instilling in every Ghanaian a great mindset of democracy, ambition, and entrepreneurship. I'm here to join you so we can build our personality and build a new mentality. My commitment to the people of Ghana remains unwavering. I will fight relentlessly for our shared vision of a prosperous, united, and empowered nation, regardless of the challenges we face. This move is not about me. It's about ensuring that the voices of Ghanaians are heard and represented in our government. We will not be silent. We will not be stopped. This is my small speech to let you know and to assure you that I took this decision, not because I just want to be a part of whatever that is existing in this country, but I took this decision because I want to be courageous enough to stand with you for our voices to be accepted, for us to be a part and the power that governs us. We need to be the ones who will be responsible for the leaders that we choose in this country. And for that note, I ask you to stand with me throughout these struggles. We have five months left. So five months can make a huge difference. Five months can be the new change, a new reformative, redemptive revolution that would change our political principles and move away the foreign influence, which is undermining our national governance. The future. future should not be dependent on us. The future should be prepared for our children. For the ones who are coming are the ones that we need to prepare Ghana as a new Ghana for them. Whatever we have been through, these mistakes, we should learn from it. These lessons, we should grow from it. But just to remind Ghanaians that a first mistake is a mistake. But the second one is a decision, and our decision has to be right to help this nation. Thank you. Now, on this note, I come back to the same fight that I've been fighting. I am calling for a continuous vote registration for this country. And we should take this very serious. Picture a young man who is 18 years old, starting university today, but don't get the chance to learn about democracy. They're not educated. They actually go to university before they are either hired by a politician, or built by a politician. And by the time they are 22, that's when they get their first right to vote. And it will take them to be 25 before they get their first job. When you look at the Western world, 
there are people who are 14 years old and 15 years old and they already have working experience by the time they are 16 they start to educate them about human rights democratic rights if we don't train build and develop our children with this education then what will happen is that they will be exported from this country and as you've already seen we have a lot of people graduating from universities we have over 50 universities in this country private and government however when people are 22 23 they are all going mm -hmm. out of this country and you can witness them the numbers this year we've had over 700,000 youth traveling leaving this country why because there's no hope and there, there are no there's no future and there are no jobs now i like to explain to Ghanaians what this is it's called exporting skills and talent when you let people export your talent from your country and your skills you are losing to the other part of the world so at this very moment i want Ghanaians to picture the ghana we're living in there are a lot of foreign entities in this country who are extracting our minerals they take it out there and turn it to product and bring it back to sell it to us in fact we go and bring our minerals back into product and sell it they say a curious cow that crosses the sea comes back as a corn beef so we are buying corn beef when we are the shepherds and the sad story is that the sheep had spent all his life running away from the wolf only to be killed by the shepherd in the end so i must say that is our leadership that is pulling us into this crisis and we need to change it we need to be the deciders we need to be the ones that are empowering leadership in this country see i don't want to become a president because i'm intelligent or smart i want to become a president because you made me become a president i want my power to come from you i want you to empower me and when i'm on the seat i need to remember that it's because of you it's because of your thumb it's because if you believe in me that's why i'm sitting on the chair and therefore i have to serve you I think the new Ghana, we are supposed to start a new nation by putting our citizens first. And on this note, I think that a lot of people have doubts about my capacity and my ability. But one thing I can assure you is that I will not allow my capacity to undermine my ability. Neither would I let my ability undermine my capacity. I am here because I want you to understand this. I know certain things that I know that it will help our generation. And I've been talking about industrialization. I know people want me to break it down, but it's also what is going to bring us our economic freedom. We need to take this very serious, that governance is going to determine our future. If we have a bad national governance, our hopes will be canceled. Our future will be blurry. And we wouldn't know what we're doing if we are educating our children without educating them about our minerals and our resources, without adding value to humanity to see what taxes, taxpayers' money can be invested in and how it can help develop the country and assist the able and the unable people, disabled people as well. And on this reason, I would still like to urge Ghanaians and the young people that we should stand together and ask the EC to open the continuous, open the gates for continuous registration. The future of this youth is very, very, very important. Democracy thrives when every eligible citizen has the opportunity to vote. I like to repeat this. Democracy thrives when every eligible citizen has the opportunity to vote. This is why I'm calling for a continuous vote registration.
this is the time this change is coming but of course i know hands down if these doors are open also i would dip into this post because i definitely believe in the youth out there and they also believe in the mindset that i have and for that reason well i wouldn't say that we're being restricted but we believe that there will be a great change if this post and doors are open for continued registration. Not to say that they haven't also given us some continued registration, but it was three days. And um, after that, I think they're saying they're going to give us another three days from the 1st to August. Uh, after advocating for the last time, it went from 27th to 30th. I want to tell you see that we appreciate that uh, support, but please consider the youth. Consider 5,000 children, 10,000, 100,000, a million children in this country who are going to turn 18 from June to November, that we are resisting them, disenfranchising them from their democratic rights. What are these million people going to become? Are they also going to run away? Are they going to be exported out of the country as we have made all the Western world exported the best of our talents to fix the same minerals they've extracted from us so we can go and buy it back? I came here to stop this. I think it's the best way for us to go forward. It's to manufacture our own is to industrialize our own. I intend to make Ghana becoming the next biggest exportation power, the exporting hub of Africa. Now picture just Takrade or Western region having to sell uh, cocoa butter, shampoo, um, everything that you buy from boots outside, everything that you're buying from jewelry, everything that you're buying from oil, petrol, fuel. Picture us distributing to all African countries. I picture Ghana having a development, the biggest park in this country that attracts all Africans to come here for tourism. Picture us making Ghana the center of attraction and also the best corner for transit, like Dubai is doing. Dubai is a corner of the earth, but they've made it the middle of the world, and everybody is going through that. And therefore, their investment, their development is growing rapidly. I have this vision for Ghana through industrialization. But first, I'm urging the nation to stand up and let's stand up for our right. Let's support the, the vision of making sure we fight for this youth, we fight for the people of Ghana so they can educate democracy properly with these people and let them know their rights. And we go ahead and have a transparent voting system without corruption. See, a power that is one with rights would be a leader that would lead with a great vision. But a power that is undermined by political principle would be a program that would disappoint a nation. We don't want to be disappointed nations anymore. We want to grow. We want to be developed. We want our children to have a future. And we don't want them to run away anymore. We want them to stay with us. We want our country developed so other people will move into our country. Because if your country is not developed, then people would come and take what they think is best for themselves and leave the country. But once it's developed and it's a good place to raise their children, to have a great job and to live here, everybody is welcome. We need a system that allows citizens to register to vote anytime, ensuring that no one is enfranchised due to the arbitrary deadlines. Continuous voter registration will empower more Ghanaians to participate in the electoral process, especially the youth and those in remote areas. By making voter registration an ongoing process, we can strengthen our democracy and ensure our elections truly reflect with the will of the people. Thank you. 
and the will of the people should be equally important to us as the demand and supply of this nation. First, let's put them in a good position. Now, now that I've been able to address um, the continuous registration and um, uh, provisional certificates and my intentions of going forward, I know some of you would like to ask me a question that if I have the gaps, someone's phone is calling, but um, I know some of you would want to ask me some questions uh, about the new falls. Uh, the new falls have a new billboard out and a new campaign, and I'm sure you've all seen it. The big six. I know there's been a lot of talk and rumors circulating the new six. I'm also here to answer the question about the new six. Talk about the concept and the idea behind the new six. The generation, a new generation of young and insightful leaders with vast knowledge about sectors of the economy mentioned that in due time, their masks will come off one by one. The unveiling process of the series of the mask, the other mask that are yet to be unveiled. Our vision for Ghana. Our vision for Ghana is ambitious and transformative. We envision a nation where every region posts with industrial vitality. Each a beacon of innovation and economic prosperity. The regional industrial revolution is at the heart of our agenda. By transforming all 16 regions into a vibrant industrial hub, we will unlock Ghana's vast mineral and human potential wealth. The transformation will create millions of jobs, reduce poverty, and spread prosperity for beyond Accra and further. We are building a future where every Ghanaian can dream big and achieve greatness. Thank you very much. Thank you. And um, I am open now for questions. But before that, I'd like to say something, and it's very personal to me. I used to feel like I was very lonely because they told me it's lonely at the top. And when I was there, I could still hear noises and voices in my head and from the streets. Then I took a decision sometime last year. I prepared myself to embark on this journey. And I went blind in my dream. But I woke up again with my sight. I only found my way out of that door in my dream because there was an eye in my head that opened. So I want to assure Ghanaians that I'm not just someone that wants to be a leader. I believe I'm chosen. I believe I'm anointed and appointed for this very moment. I know there are doubts, but that's fair. That's fine. That's human. This is the time that we don't have to depend on choices anymore. This is the time that we rely on decisions. The decision that we take today that will shape our lives five years from now and build the future of our children. I am here to go through this journey with you. And together, let's build it together. Let's build a better nation, a better country, a new set of generational leaders that will thrive on our ideas and vision today. And in 30 years, I believe that we will turn Ghana to be the hub of Africa. We would build Ghana as Texas of America and be industrialist, be able to supply the rest of Africa, build the best relationship with other countries and unify Africa, unify our governmental systems so we can have a developmental agenda 
that will be continued by our children, children, children. Thank you very much. Thank you for making time to come here. Thank you.